So I would highly recommend to sit back, relax, put on your thinking cap, and try to survive throughout this whole video, because we're going to be talking about time traveling within Attack on Titan, especially after the most recent events. I will say straight off the bat that I am not a time traveling expert. I have done a good amount of research uh, for this video alone, but just like the idea of time traveling itself or time looping or anything relating to time, the ideas are absolutely endless and not concrete. So there's definitely going to be a lot of corruption, especially on some ideas that I proposed in the beginning of the video, and they may become corrupt after I finish mentioning something else. So they're going to create some very weird holes within the story and the narrative of this video. That's where I'm hoping you guys will come in and definitely correct me on this information, whether it be time traveling or the ideas within Attack on Titan in itself and how this doesn't work or it's actually meant like this in total. Mind you, this is all theory crafting to an extent, so I'm not trying to betray this as a legitimate idea of the actual story and the current events, but I thought it would be interesting to deep dive into it and look a little bit further than the time looping theory that's been around for quite a bit of time, which I believe is only the tip of the iceberg. So with that being said, let's get started. So I'm going to be using a reference to hopefully make this a little bit easier to digest and understand. I'm not too sure when it's going to come in place regarding the video, but it's a movie, Interstellar. If you have seen Interstellar, it's Matthew McConaughey and it's by Christopher Nolan. It's an incredible film and there's a lot of ideas and the general consensus of the film in total that's going to be used within this idea and Attack on Titan in general. I think it's a, a pretty prevalent idea with a certain type of time traveling uh, paradox, which I believe is called the bootstrap paradox or the predestination paradox or something along those lines. This is the concept we're going to be using. I'm going to try and reference Interstellar to some extent so it's easier. There will be spoilers for the film, so if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you do and then come back to this video. <laughs> Starting off after the most recent events of Attack on Titan, there is a lot of things that people have been pointing out. That throughout the story of Attack on Titan specifically, there has been two people, two silhouettes, two mysterious figures throughout the entirety of Attack on Titan's length. Now, at the time, we obviously wouldn't know who these characters were, but with the most recent chapter and finding out that Zeke and Aaron are traveling in memories, or at least technically back in time at this point, to the extent where they can even influence these supposed memories, a lot of people have made the connection that this is them. That throughout the entirety of the story, there is specific panels and situations where two characters, or maybe just one, specifically placed and put within the panel or the episode or this or that. It's very hard to figure out who that person is or if they even matter at that point. But now with what's going on, it makes a whole lot of sense. That somehow, some way, Aaron and Zeke have been within the story of Attack on Titan since day one. What exactly does this mean? And how is this even possible? First and foremost, I want to talk about timelines. And this is going to be important and maybe even difficult to understand. It's definitely going to be difficult to explain. When you think of the story of Attack on Titan, you think about it on one singular timeline. It's not crossing over into different dimensions or anything along those lines. It takes place on one singular timeline. Now, if the story didn't actually feature time traveling, then it wouldn't matter that it's a single timeline. However, the looping idea comes from that this whole timeline is looped repeatedly repetitively. Nothing ever changes. And that from the beginning of the timeline to the end of the timeline, it's looped over again. So it's just going to continue to happen over and over and over again within a singular timeline. Now, normally, I don't think that would be a problem. However, because of this singular timeline and the fact that potentially future Aaron and future Zeke have been within this timeline since day one, it kind of breaks the singular timeline idea. Supposedly, as soon as you time travel back in time, you open up different timelines or you you create a different timeline. So the idea that Attack on Titan's story takes place on one singular timeline is not necessarily true at the moment. And that instead, we should look at the idea that Attack on Titan's story takes place over an endless amount of timelines with endless amounts of possibilities. Forget about the looping at the moment. So what does this mean? Instead of there being one timeline, there's multiple different timelines with multiple different errands. Yes. The reason why this is important to know and that there's an endless amount of different 
different timelines is going back to the idea that the future Eren and future Zeke technically cannot come in contact with the past Eren if it's on a one singular timeline. Because as soon as you time travel, you open up and create a different timeline. The only way that this would technically be possible with what the story is currently going with and what potentially could be happening with these mysterious figures in the background actually being Zeke and Eren is that they're jumping from a different timeline to another timeline where the event of what Eren is going through hasn't actually took place yet. In saying that, what does this do? How does this help us get to this point? In the most recent chapter, we actually found out that Zeke and Eren can influence these quote-unquote memories. Grisha within this memory actually witnessed an older version of Zeke. This is extremely important to understand because if this was a memory specifically, there would be no way for Grisha to ever come in contact with an older variation of Zeke. There'd be no way of him to even understand that concept, let alone see him and this mystical ghostly figure. So the only way that it could be possible is that these memories are being actually accessed by time traveling, by jumping into a different timeline where Grisha is still alive and a young Eren exists and future Eren and future Zeke are influencing that timeline. The reason why this is very important is because if this is the main construct of this story, that means Eren and Zeke can manipulate a different timeline. They can't manipulate their own timeline timeline, but they can manipulate another one. And with the overall concept of the loop of the story being relative, it only takes one influence timeline to potentially break out of the loop. And if the future Eren right now that we know is trying to do this within another timeline by showing Zeke, this is potentially the outcome that they're leading up to. A timeline that actually worked. A timeline that gets things right that ticks all the correct boxes and potentially breaks the loop of time and repeating the cycle of hatred over and over again. But it's because of the influence of a different timeline, Zeke and Eren, by the experiences they have gone through. To help make this a little bit more digestible, Interstellar comes into play. Now obviously there's a lot of different things within Interstellar that takes place to lead to different events, but the general consensus of the idea is pretty prevalent. There's a moment within the movie where the main character enters a certain place. This place is extremely benevolent to time. It's actually manipulated like an object to an extent. Now this is something that the main character can't necessarily comprehend because it's past their comprehension. However, the main character can actually interact with this place. What the main character stumbles upon is a version of himself, a different timeline basically, where the main character within this place can use this place as a, a way to change a different timeline. So the main character in another timeline that hasn't left Earth yet would actually stay. The whole point of the main character within this place that is benevolent to time is that he's trying to manipulate himself in a different timeline to stop him from leaving Earth and stay with his children. And he has a physical contact with that timeline, knocking on the bookshelf and knocking over books. He's tapping dust and leaving a message behind for his daughter. So these things wouldn't repeat. That main character in the different timeline wouldn't end up where he is right now, doing the exact same thing. What's important about both of these situations is that there is a place. In Interstellar, there is a place that is uncomprehensible. With an Attack on Titan, however, there is recently a place that is very similar to it, and that is the Coordinate, the place where all the paths of Ymir actually connect, which is the place that we're currently in at the moment. This place is benevolent to time. It's very similar to the place within Interstellar. What this means is that when we seen Zeke in there, he was in there for a very long time. But in the real world, with the current events of Aaron getting shot and Zeke catching his head, time is hardly moving, potentially. So many years have passed within this timeless place where Zeke's hair has grown a pretty decent length, but it's happened in a split second within the real world. No time has passed, potentially at all. The biggest surprise about this place is that we always thought Ymir specifically was benevolent to time, but when we find out that she's a slave to royal blood and that the place that she's actually in is also benevolent to time, this changes things quite a bit. To the extent where anyone that is able to enter this place, like Zeke and Eren, also gain the benefits for it. And the Founding Titan allows the ability to access all of this to every extent, including time traveling. What we think is memory manipulation within the story currently is actually manipulating current events in different timelines. With Grisha seeing Zeke is not potentially a memory, but within a different timeline of Eren growing up and Grisha seeing Zeke 
from a different timeline, an older version which would realistically be impossible if everything took place in a singular timeline. So what exactly does this mean? With all of this information right now, how can it be utilized to such an extent? How does it work with the time looping theory? Considering the Founding Titan is a lot more powerful than we think, considering the area and even Ymir herself is benevolent to time, anyone who enters this place and using the powers of the Founding Titan can change the outcome of a lot of different things. Unfortunately, Ymir is bound to be a slave to royal blood, so everything that she is doing right now is under Zeke's control with whatever he wants to do. Zeke has bypassed the war-renouncing ideal, one, because he's kind of like a half-royal, and two, he didn't enter this place on his own regard. If anything, he was given access by Eren, and Zeke referenced to that by calling Eren a key. To put it simply, Zeke himself didn't open up the door, which would have restricted him. Eren opened up the door for him to enter this place, and Zeke followed through. But because time is different within this place, Zeke has been here for far much longer, and it's known about Ymir and this place for far much longer, with the interaction that Zeke had a couple of chapters ago with Ymir, recreating his body. There is a possibility that Ymir herself does not agree with Zeke, but because she's bound to be a slave to royal blood first, there's nothing she can do about it. She can't even speak out, potentially. She may even want to help Eren to this extent. From here, there is a lot of possibilities that could come into play, but to add on top of this, there may be something here within this place and with Ymir specifically that has to be a legitimate thing, that has to stay around for these timelines to not corrupt in on themselves or for the looping to not be discontinued and close in again, so everything would keep repeating itself over and over again if this place wasn't here. If Ymir didn't exist and this place didn't exist, the loop would most likely continue over and over again until potentially this place is a thing. So what does this mean for Eren entirely? It could be possible that the only way this story is going to see some sort of outcome in some sort of beneficial way if either Zeke or Eren takes up the mantle of Ymir and becomes the quote-unquote new and final founding titan. Now there's not really much to go on this idea in itself, but I feel like like this place always has to be a thing and because of the powers that this place and the founding titan ability can even do with creating titans i'm sure they can easily take away the idea kind of stemmed off me thinking about like what if every single titan shifter was in this place at the moment what would the real world look like what would this place look like even could ymir take away titan shifting abilities would ymir be back to her original self would she have all power and control because technically all portions of her soul are back together in this place is the reason why she's bound by royal blood and to serve them is because she's so split up indefinitely. Because all pieces of her soul would never reach back to this singular place at the same time. If you think about it like that, that in itself is looping. It would be almost impossible for every single Titan Shifter to be alive at this point that has a portion of Ymir to be in the same place as her. She would only get to meet them when they die and then transfer it over to someone else as she is the one that potentially creates Titans and gives them to different people from this place. Surely there must be something in play if all of the Titans at a singular time were to be put into this place with her. Would there be a way to release her from this burden, from this slavery that she has and put it onto someone else? Would it be possible for Eren to take up the mantle, but not necessarily become a Titan giver, where he would continue to create the nine Titans, but potentially stop all of it completely, take away the Titan curse, revert everything back to normal, and the Titans don't exist at all. And he would be the one to kind of overlook everything from this, in this place that is not restricted by time alone. How would we get there? I'm not entirely sure. Whether he can pull the Titan shifting abilities from different timelines, whether he could influence Armin and Annie and everyone else to come to this place metaphorically to some extent and drain it like that, I'm not sure. If this is even a possibility, I don't know. But I think it's important to mention this just with the time traveling stuff in total. Overall, I think there is a lot of things here. And I wouldn't be surprised if Isayama is creating some sort of time traveling paradox with something similar to Interstellar in mind. Even though Interstellar has a lot of different things that lead to that time paradox, Attack on Titan has some similarities to an extent. More specifically, Specifically, the place that is benevolent to time is very similar to Interstellar's version for it, and a person using that place to create and manipulate it to whatever way they seem fit, which is something that Ymir has been doing. Or the idea that the current
current Eren or future Eren right now is creating a new timeline or is jumping into a different timeline to be able to see himself and manipulate the outcomes of that child Eren and changing the course of what that child Eren would do so it wouldn't repeat the same cycle of what the time traveling Eren would and the information that he knows but he wouldn't be able to do that on a singular timeline or his own timeline and if one of these timelines met a specific condition it could potentially break the loop that has been going on with the Titans specifically and push forward into the future potentially with Yamiya maybe being replaced with Eren and him becoming the person to kind of gain all the nine Titans into one specific place to reclaim everything and to stop it from leaving this place. I don't know if Eren is aware of that. I don't know how he would be, but he seems very knowledgeable right now. He seems very calm. I don't know how he's going to overpower Zeke if Zeke generally has the ability of the founding Titan himself, but we're definitely moving in a very interesting direction and I'm really excited to see how Isayama handles his time traveling stuff because I know a lot of people are excited. So with that being said, that is basically it. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you. I apologize for it being brain melting. It 100% would have been a whole lot smarter to write a script or even dot points, but you know what? For some reason, I couldn't just write any of that. And here's the outcome, a jumbled mess of a whole bunch of different ideas and concepts that may or may not work. I'm not entirely sure, but thank you regardless. Like I said, I apologize for it being so goddamn long. I 100% know there's definitely a lot of holes within this self do note i'm not trying to push this theory as like this is what's going to happen uh it's more like the possibilities of maybe some of these ideas within this video could potentially work if that using what we know from attack on titan and time traveling etc etc so i'm very interested to see what all of you think if you have any ideas of your own but i'm actually going to end the video off here i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you in the next one goodbye